Welcome, everyone, to the Smoking Room Podcast. I am your host, Dan, a.k.a. Dirty Wolf, and uh, we're joined today by my co-host on the far right of me down there. Actually, I'm pointing the wrong way. This way. Far right, so unscripted. And uh, we've also got the mustached, beautiful man, Pongo himself here. The real Pongo. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Welcome back to our Twitch viewers, and welcome for the first time to our audio listeners. Um, we have uh, been doing this show for a little while, but live only, and this is our first time now on the uh, Spotify, Apple, all the all the audio podcasts. So I'm going to let everyone go around and introduce themselves here really quick. Uh, I gave them a little intro, but let them tell you a little more about themselves. And uh, yeah, you can, uh, you can expect uh, lots of... Uh, we- talking about movies, shows, and lots of game talk here, as well as some uh, memes and jokes along the way. So uh, first I'll pass it off to my co-host, Mr. Soul Unscripted here first. Tell him, tell him about yourself, Soul. What's going on? Uh, I'm Soul uh, of uh, the Unscripted Podcast, co-host to the Smoking Room Podcast. Um, avid gamer, uh, veteran, uh, two-time, two-time war vet, you know. Uh, and you know, I, I kind of dabble in everything: art, uh, art, gaming. You name it, I'm probably going to do it. Tech, photography. Uh, I do a little bit of it all and, and everything. But my podcast, my podcast is simply uh, very chill. It's much like this one, where we we just kind of randomize and talk about anything, and then we talk about my PTSD uh, and being a vet and everything. So, yeah, that's me. Right on. That's Soul, guys. Make sure to check out his podcast. We'll do a nice plug at the end for it, and as well, we'll have the info down below in the in the description. You can click the links. Pongo, what's up, brother? What is going on, everybody? The real Pongo Pygmaeus. Most of you know me as your tribe leader. Mm-hmm. Um, streamer of a variety of games, master of none. Uh, most of them I don't finish, and most of them I die from fall damage. I feel that. I feel that. I'm from, not, not in league, though. Not in league. <laughs> not in league. I can't fall into, damage league. I just die. Yeah. If you could fall, though, you'd find a spot. But, true. Uh, true. Hey, I feel I'm that, surprised though. I've yet, yet to find that spot. But I probably have more fall deaths in Elden Ring than, than uh, boss deaths. Well, actually, I don't know. After Melania, we'll see. <laughs> it would be, it'd, it'd be pretty close, maybe. My first death in Elden Ring was uh, me rolling away from that tutorial boss and falling. So, so oh, sounds about right. right. But yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's about what you can expect from us here, guys. It's just uh, you're gonna f- see a wide variety of different characters throughout the weeks, as well as uh, we'll be doing some interviews too, interviewing some other uh, podcast hosts and content creators. As we all do, uh, we stream it live on Twitch here, and uh, everybody will be plugging their Twitches at the end of every show as well. And we'll try to have links in the description. But if you want to come and watch the show live, we do uh, take some questions from the live chat as well as uh, from our Discord. We'll have a link for that below. But you can watch the show live every Saturday night at twitch.tv slash Dirty Wolf Live at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. But, uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to get right into it. We're going to start off with news. We got our own uh, scuffed version of uh, Internet news here. And uh, this week we have um, to start, first of all, because, uh, like I said, we are behind. We haven't uh, – We've been on basically like a six-month hiatus, which is my fault, but we're back. So we're going to kick it off with the most important topic that's been sweeping the nation the last few weeks. Morbius. Yes. <laughs> Pongo News coming. Lord. <laughs> Morbin out, man. <laughs> we're Morbin out in here. Anybody that doesn't know, Morbius is the, the newest Sony movie that released it's probably a few months ago now. I don't actually have the release date, but um, – <laughs> Everybody knows it was god awful. Uh, it was, yes. but the it memes was. that have spawned from it are it's as I said, it's basically the moth meme of 2022. Except for I kind of actually find this one uh, a funny meme, but uh, yeah, I just uh, we, we've been dying having fun with the Morbius <laughs> memes. But the the big news of it was the memes hit so popular that uh, this weekend. Uh, Morbius was re-released into the wild, into the theaters, and over unfortunately, a th- yeah, over a thousand theaters, <laughs> and um, it bombed again. Uh, they said it made about eighty-five k in total on Friday night. Uh, what, do you, what do you guys think about that? It's funny. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, they could have just left that alone. Mm-hmm. Like they could have just left it where it was. No mm-hmm. one asked. Just because right. we're memeing your movie doesn't mean that you get to re-release it thinking that's gonna get some more hype. That's trash. Leave it in the trash and call it a day. Uh, yeah, I don't see. I don't see why they. I, I mean, it's funny that they re-released yeah. it, but here again, yeah, like I, mean, I, I don't it's see a great meme. Right, and the only people that I think that once saw it were probably like, "Oh, look at the meme." They saw the meme, didn't oh, see yeah. the movie. They're like, "Let's give it a shot." Well, not only that, it was like trending on Twitter like six times, maybe in the last two, like Man. more than anything, just it's more than out, more than uh, time. <laughs> I I do appreciate though there was like a clip uh, uh, on Twitter and Instagram over there yesterday. And it was of actually Jared Leto sitting on the couch. I don't know if you guys saw this one. He was sitting yeah, on the couch it. reading mm-hmm. the script, and she's like, "What are you reading?" He's like, "Oh, it's it's nothing. It's nothing." And when he unfolds, it says Morbius two. It's Morbin time. <laughs> so that that is the one thing I will say is that, you know, a lot of people are like, stop letting Sony believe they can make these shitty movies. Um, people make shitty movies all the time anyways. Yes. Um, I think the thing that makes the first Morbius so shit, though, is that it, it is trying to take itself seriously, mostly. Uh, the villain, if everybody saw that, that badass dance clip on social media, the villain doing the dance, you could tell that guy knew this movie was going to be shit. He just had fun with it. So if they did do a sequel and they embraced the memes and just went full silly with it, I don't know, we could get something kind of fun and silly, but if they try to make a serious sequel, yeah, no shot. <laughs> They, they need to they need to whenever they do a Marvel movie they need to include Marvel <laughs> yeah <laughs> well because they're, they're, they're standalones like like don't get me wrong uh what is it um Venom, Venom was okay yeah. Venom was yeah I think I think Venom Venom's was okay. the best standalone in yeah. my but opinion. like whenever they do it with like that without Marvel it just does not do good Spider Man is they, they, it's been doing great because of Marvel well, I can imagine what Sony would have done without Marvel. Arguably, mm-hmm. though, like even though you know, Basic Spider-Man Two was really bad, and Spider-Man Three, like from the Raimi collection, was bad. They still did have some decent Spider-Man movies, but right. the more I think what ruined them is actually when the studios stepped in more. Spider-Man Three, for example, the studio forced them to put Venom in. Spider-Man, mm-hmm. the Amazing Spider-Man Two, they forced them to kind of start rushing the. Uh, They've been trying to get Sinister Six off the ground forever. So I think right. it's if they just the main thing is like they could make these movies if they just let the directors and the writers make the fucking movie and, and keep their fucking heads out of it. And better mm-hmm. actors, because the first Venom actor, like, oh, no, yeah, no disrespect <laughs> yeah. On him, but like he's not Venom. <laughs> what, the, the Twitch chat saying what ruined Spider-Man is that he didn't morb in time. That could be true. very true. That could that's, be very that's, true. Yeah. Um, could have been. But uh, to piggyback off of kind of what Soul said, though, with the, with the the Marvel thing and not letting uh, Marvel do it, we could piggyback off that there was some uh, news actually out just today, um, or may- maybe it was yesterday, but I just saw it today on social media about Deadpool 3, and uh, a lot of people were kind of worried about that being owned by, uh, you know, Disney Marvel now, or, you know, are they still going to go rated R? Because let's be real, um, the... the, the, the uh, Deadpool's got to stay rated R, right? You can't got really. To. There's just no yeah, way no, to yeah. cap him. No. Yeah, no, I don't think that would be good at all. Um, but they said, the, the reports I said uh, were that Marvel wasn't doing that. They were being very encouraging about the, the hard R rating and keeping it Deadpool, keeping it what people love, and uh, just now having a bigger world to do it in and more characters and more villains. So that's pretty badass and exciting. That is. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm stoked Agreed. for whenever we get some more some more news on Deadpool three. That would be sick. Um, yeah, yeah. Didn't they? Did, they came out with saying, "Oh, that's what you just said." Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they said a little bit a, more lenience on the R. Or well, something people like were that. worried before because like Disney Plus before, especially before they had Star on there, had no you know like rated it, R kind of shit. Right? Yeah, you, yeah right. you can't. It's it's hard to. But now There's Deadpool needs an R. Like, I'm sorry. Swing that like, for, for for Disney. Yeah, I wonder. Disney wants to be so clean. I wonder now though if that'll set the precedent if they'll do a movie like Blade in R, like rated R, because Blade it, they have Blade their, needs to be in rated R. It can't be PG thirteen. I'm man. kind of in the same vein as that. I'd it like can't to keep, be. keep Blade rated R. Right. Any of those darker superhero type things, like it can't. I don't like. That's what made Logan better all, than all the other uh, Wolverine movies, in my opinion. Right. Yeah. Was that they they didn't have to hold back any? Well, and the thing is though, like wasn't cheesy. I think nowadays they could do most of Logan 
Like after seeing the Batman, the newest, uh, you know, Robert Pattinson Batman, hmm. I think that they could probably do Logan. Like doesn't even have to be rated R because uh, that's true. I don't know. They it's tone. It's all about tone. Yeah, yeah. They they pulled that off and did it pretty dark. I think maybe it's just the gore, and you do need, you know, he's a guy with yeah. fucking claws ripping people apart. So facts. Um, yeah. But uh, I guess since we're on that vein with, you know, talking about Disney and stuff, we can talk about, sure, they're handling Marvel great, but uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi released. We're about three episodes deep. We're going to try to stay away from too many spoilers on that one, though, for the listeners out there. But uh, I'm interested to see what uh, any of the audio listeners out there, you know, leave us a comment and stuff. What do you think about that so far about Obi-Wan, how you guys are liking it? Uh, I'll be honest, I don't quite hated as much as everyone does i do find most disney star wars just kind of i don't know i think they're they're putting all their money and their resources more into marvel they're not uh it's of course uh, yeah it's their money maker as yeah. much as as much as star wars could be their money maker they just believe that their marvel side is just going to make all their money yeah and uh it's some of the writing and stuff to me is just a bit cheesy but uh, obi-wan i think it's just to me, like I've said, it's the fan service Star Wars show. It's the Spider-Man No Way Home of Star Wars. You're literally just watching it to see Ewan McGregor and Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader and all the characters that we've loved so long, right? And, yeah. and as well, some new characters. And uh, it's been uh, fairly enjoyable. We, w- I will say, uh, I'm sure I could speak for all of us here, you know, there's been some controversy with hate online with it and stuff, which ends up unfortunately happening with... A lot of shows these days, but Everything. Star Wars being such a multi generational show, you know, having the prequels, the originals, the sequels, and all this new Disney stuff has such a wide fan base of people attacking each other. Um, yeah. Bro, chill the fuck out, okay? For first of all, if you want to hate on anybody, hate on the writers because, you know, all of the actors in this show, I think, are phenomenal. You know, anything that they do do that I don't really like, I don't even put on them. It's the writers. You know, you give somebody a handful of dog shit. What do you what do you what do you expect them to do with it? Um, right. You know, because most of all, the one receiving the most hate, of course, is um, is there Moses Ingram. Is that the name of uh, Riva? Who Riva, uh, yeah. I actually yeah. don't think is as terrible as everyone says. And if and to. For some people to say actually that she's a bad actress is completely false because you watched Queen's Gambit or The Tragedy of Macbeth and she was brilliant. Those are the only two I've seen her in. But but yeah, I'm excited to see where it goes. We're halfway. The last episode was, you know, we, we got some good fan service. I don't know, Pongo, did you get caught up? Did you see episode three? Not yet. Oh, he, Pongo didn't do his homework, chat. But uh, I didn't do my homework. <laughs> uh, I could tell you one was underwhelming. Two got a little bit better for me. But yeah, I, and I think I'll 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 enjoy parts of three if not all of three more than the first two um but here again i for me i'm i'm for all the people that love it i'm glad but for me i'm just over this this part of it uh, like the star wars storyline is what i'm saying yeah. this specific timeline yeah it would be nice to see something new which actually in that same vein we could say they did announce um you know since our last podcast we had a lot of star wars announcements and trailers but they did announce the next star wars movie uh, will be helmed by uh, director Taika Waititi, who did uh, Thor Ragnarok and uh, uh, now That's doing Thor hands. Love and Thunder and Jojo Rabbit. So he is a great director. I'm excited to see what he can pull off. But, uh, yeah, I think there's also just something to be said about just oversaturation in general. Um, I used to be of the mind that, like, I love Star Wars. I can never get enough of it. But now when you do get so much of it, you know, I think it just it does feel a little oversaturated. It was more special when you had to wait, th- you know, three or four years per movie. Or fuck, for one point there, we had to wait what fifteen years for the next movie. Yeah, it's a while to get it. Yeah, so well, that's what I, I remember. Like when Force Awakens trailer dropped, like how excited I was oh, for that. Yeah, and like I just haven't had that feeling since then. No. And I think that's partially because of what you just said—the oversaturation. Well, I'll, yeah. I'll admit I'm a sucker for trailers, so every trailer, even in the sequel trilogy, as terrible as they are, every trailer did get me hyped. Not as much as, like you said, probably for Force Awakens because it was such a big gap, but I do think they they edited their trail edited their trailers masterfully. Even the Last Jedi, mm-hmm. which I hate, um, the trailer was the like, good. I thought it got me hyped, but then I got there, I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the bad part about the trailers, you know. The the trailer sells you on something that's gold that you would think is gold and, Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, it's uh, it's always hit or miss. You can't base it all off of that. That's for sure. Uh, 
we could uh what, what else did they announce oh yeah we got the ahsoka coming out which uh I'm nervous and intrigued to see. Yeah, I, well, the rumor is that it's going to be the sequel to the Rebel show, which I kind of hope it's not that. I hope they just do something else. I'd like to see that storyline specifically, like just do it animated, like the first show, right? But right. that's that's me. Um, we got a look at the Andor show, which for any of our audio listeners, you wouldn't have seen me rant about this before, but that was the show that I was the least interested in of any Star Wars product. Uh, pff, that we've ever heard of, but I won't lie. Uh, just like we said with Star Wars trailers, they did win me on that trailer. I went, oh shit, this actually looks good. Um, I don't know what any any of y'all think thought if you saw them all or what, but I didn't see. I, I like a chance to look at them. Uh, I like the uh, yeah the Andor trailer was good. It was just uh, for me, it was just the shots were like this. The shots of the scenes that they chose made yeah. it exciting epic, but and exciting, star, yeah. star wars visions season two which i'm hoped uh hyped for because uh that is like you said new star wars at least new stories and stuff the first season was just uh different animators per episode and uh it was pretty enjoyable mm -hmm. for the most part not, not all of them were great but some of them were really good so um yeah i'd, I'd definitely take some more of that oh the, what i wanted to add on with obi-wan was now it's a rumor i don't know if it's true but apparently they're they're doing an obi-wan 2 possibly after this one where do they take it from here? That, like, yeah. What? <laughs> are, are they following Clone Wars? That could be interesting. I, like a prequel season, I guess. That's so weird, though. Like, I don't, I don't now, know. Now, it was just a rumor. I didn't see, like, anything uh, confirmed necessarily, that, yeah, necessarily by Disney uh, on that. It was just uh, reading some rumors here, right? So I just thought, you know, what, like, where, where could they actually go? Where would they with go that? with that, yeah. Uh, the one well, thing that's I will, the. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I. I mean, I get doing the story now because it's like a little filler. But like, yeah. Once this see, unless they like leave this series off with a cliffhanger and still have more to go until New Hope. But yeah, I just you're cramming a lot into a small space, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I did want to jump back and say, though, actually, like the acting, uh, especially on Ewan McGregor's part, I loved because I noticed like in the first episode and stuff, he's almost talking similar to. Uh, how uh, the original Obi Wan was it Alec Alec McGinnis or is that the, that's the guy's name? Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Um, he 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 talked with kind of a similar candor, and I, I thought that was really interesting. I'm sure that played a big role in like, um, or uh, what's his name played a big role in his uh, his method acting or whatever. His yeah, yeah, it could have for sure. Um, how he wanted to portray the character. So the next Owen's great. I'll say that Uncle Owen or whatever, right? Oh, Joel Edgerton, I think, is one of the most underrated actors um, in Hollywood. I love, I love him, and he was Uncle Owen in the prequels for the very little mm -hmm. that you saw him. Um, but yeah, and we saw him very little in this one too. But and he also was talking with the same candor as old Uncle mm -hmm. Owen from A New Hope, which I love. That I thought it was great. So yeah, I love Joel Edgerton. I'll, I'll simp for him all day. Um, and that was the, the the one of the only scenes that I did enjoy from the first episode was his scene. Where they were all in the street and the uh, yeah he was really good. was kind of talking he, yeah he was really good. Um, so the the next piece that we're gonna get to some gaming news here, chat, but we've got one more piece of dribble to get through. But it's, it's not really dribble because it was uh, <laughs> it was quite the spectacle for basically six weeks of everybody's life here. The last little bit we weren't running the podcast, so this will be the only episode that we talk about it. But now that it's all over, the Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard the. Uh, <laughs> Quite the spectacle it was, the amount of views that this received on YouTube and, and Twitch alone. Like I said, we all stream here on Twitch, and I know most of us were watching uh, Asmund Gold watch it with, like, what, 460 people in there or some yeah, shit? Yeah, he was... The he YouTube was, channels yeah, were, were over... Uh, the, the Law & Court channel on YouTube was over 2 million views. Um, it was it was absolutely crazy. Um, a lot of people got the, the justice for Johnny that they wanted, which... I got to say, I didn't quite expect, not because I didn't believe his story or anything for the listeners out there, just um, we know uh, how hard defamation cases are to actually win. And right. uh, damn, you know, uh, pretty fucking crazy. I mean, but if you if you look at how his lawyers presented everything, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> Every didn't make it hard to sway the, the jurors. Yeah, <laughs> no. Yeah, his God. his uh, lawyer team absolutely crushed it, destroyed uh, it. Yeah, and uh, it was just like crazy too how 
how many people were invested in it, you know, like you'd be at work. And, uh, I remember like the day that they were like, okay, it's, it's, it's the end of the trial, or whatever that day, like every, everybody in the like offices everywhere and other people I talked to like, yeah, man, everybody at my work was watching that shit. And then the day they announced the verdict was coming up, just everybody going live with it. And, um, you know, having it on, getting ready to hear the the verdict, it was pretty crazy. All the people outside the courtroom, quite the spectacle indeed. Um, yeah, we're uh, I'm a if you haven't watched it, listeners, we're I'm a big fan, anyways, of a uh, Meat Canyon on YouTube, and uh, he he called it a week before. Basically, the verdict was one of his uh, videos. It's quite morbid, so uh, warning. But uh, man, it was funny, and it was. Uh, it was quite accurate. And yeah, as the Twitch chat is saying, she lost the case herself. I would have to agree. And, um, you know, there's been a lot of stuff said afterwards. I'm not going to go too deep into that. But, yeah. um, you know, I, I think that it was a, a, a victory overall for abuse victims out there. And uh, it was a good turnout, personally. Um, but the reason why I do bring it up, actually, because, well, A, it was... You know, we do entertainment news, and I guess you could say that was entertainment. Everybody was watching it, so uh, the world was watching. The it. The world was watching it. Indeed, they mm-hmm. were. Uh, people wanted Captain Jack Sparrow back. Now, actually, before actually we move on to the main point of this topic, he he claimed that he will not go back, even if uh, uh, Disney was to ask him and offer him a shit ton of money. Do you guys? What do you guys think? Do you think he'll go back? And do you think now? I've heard rumors that. They've already written or, and are getting ready to fully reboot Pirates of the Caribbean. What do you think about like both these statements? Do you think he'll go back? And if he doesn't, do you even think a Pirates of the Caribbean movie could survive without Johnny Depp? Because I personally um, do not. Well, one, if he's in as much financial trouble <laughs> as he says he is, then I honestly technically would, um, even if it's for a little bit. Well, just you know, just to get the dough, so he can't be too yeah, bad now. Just get the dough. Like, uh, you don't want to miss your your opportunity for the bag if you got it. Uh, but Disney definitely burnt that bridge, like uh, like Twitch chat said. So if I were him, I, to for the for the pride's sake, I probably would not go back. Um, and could the the, the series survive? Um, it, I mean, it will it will go into movies, but it will not be the same without Jack Sparrow. By no means, and so with as many fans as he has now, since you know yeah. everything's gone on, I don't know how him. I don't. I don't know how it would survive without him in it. Mm. Yeah, you can't recreate the what the first one captured, or even that like the first, second, and third. And ever since then, it's just. I think for me, it's slowly gone downhill, and I, I don't see him coming back. And I, even if they reboot the franchise, like it, sure, I'll go watch it. I'll like it, but it's not going to compare to what it was right i actually low-key really Can't really like the, the fourth magic. one i actually low-key What's really the like the stranger tides yeah because i like uh ian mcshane as blackbeard but um okay i i don't know i mean you know what i do think you know um i'm just gonna say it burn some bridges here i do think a lot of people uh enjoy watching dog shit and drivel nowadays that's why they were on fast and the furious fucking 26 or whatever <laughs> the fuck they're doing um but um it's for family. I, I just, Jesus. I don't I know. About family. I hate that movie. Anyways, <laughs> I, I don't think that it really could survive. I think they'll try one for sure, but I don't know. Oh, of course. And uh, as for if they wanted to try and still include Jack Sparrow and rewrite him, good luck. Because I don't know if uh, the listeners or everybody knows this. Disney literally couldn't write Jack Sparrow even when they had them. He had to, like he made and created that character entirely. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. couldn't even write for that character basically. Now I do want to rebuttal about the Disney Burt that bridge for a second is that they definitely did and I do think there is a pride thing there but if he you know, if he is in financial crisis and he wants to stay in show business, it doesn't do anybody any favors to uh, really boycott Disney, unfortunately, because they are controlling much more than people know, even like series wise stuff like that. I didn't even know this till a couple of weeks ago. Disney owns Hulu as well. Yeah, they do. Oh, that's why they, that's why the bundle that. exists. Yeah. Um, oh, that's yeah. Yes, with that in, too. In, in Canada, that. we don't have Hulu, so we just get all of the Hulu shit on Disney Plus. Yeah, huh? Like uh, uh, Pam and Tommy, it's a Hulu original that's on Disney Plus for us. So um, I just, you know, it, I, and and I could be wrong. I just, I just don't think 
you do yourself any favors by telling them to go fuck themselves. With you know, you could do the pride thing for a bit, but after a couple of years, you're gonna be begging them to come back. You know. I mean, yeah. I mean, Disney is where most of the money is right now when it comes to making movies. Now, I could see him not wanting to do pirates though, just because it is, you know, like they were great for the time, like Pongo said, but it's played right. out now, right? You gotta, yep. you gotta hang the code up, or maybe in 20 years when he's a that that I think is the only way you reboot it. You do it when he's an old man and he just like. Is only in the first one and then dies or some shit. That's true. Passing of the torch kind of a thing. Yeah. But. Yeah, so they're going to reboot it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like everything else. I'm pretty sure they already have scripts written and stuff from what I've read. And I mean, you know. they do ever they reboot everything now. So yeah. It's nostalgia overload. Well, you know, not not many of them no, can write no anything original. No one wants to writing things. Yeah, because most of them can't. The guys that can are the, the movies that go unnoticed, unfortunately, I think, or, or a bit more under the radar. Like, uh, you That's know, true. Robert Eggers is just brilliant with The Lighthouse and The Northman and, and shit like that. But, mm. um, And the, what, what was that other one? I haven't seen it yet. I'm going to be watching it this week. But uh, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, everybody I've heard from just says it's the most unique movie they've seen in the last 10 years easily. So. There is still some creators out there. Unfortunately, they're just not on the uh, on the Disney pay bill <clears throat> or True. Warner Brothers, which actually was the the other main point of that topic. Immediately after the trial, uh, rumors have arose, and again, chat like I'll say rumors and stuff, but it's because I I do follow like a lot of these uh, reporters in like gaming and entertainment and stuff, and some of them. Uh, are like 50 50 and some of them i'm like usually this guy's like spot on like 90 percent uh, uh truth rate and the rumors and i think they are probably pretty true is that warner brothers went into emergency meetings after the trial a couple days after and that uh amber heard might be getting fully scrapped now from aquaman 2 especially after uh trending trending hashtags of people saying we're we're gonna fucking boycott aquaman 2 if she's still in the movie so uh <sighs> What do you, I want to know though? Do you guys think that she should lose the role like completely, or what do you guys think? So you go first. Um. Well, given the fact that you know Johnny lost, um, yeah, was it Amazing Beast? Yeah. yeah. Um, that was the Warner Brothers one he lost. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it only right because he she did she did play. It one and she did one role with her in it, so she technically did one role like he did one role in Amazing Beasts. So, mm -hmm. um, technically, she they don't have to use her fact because she's gonna get paid regardless, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but going forward, Johnny. I don't think I think it's in their best interest, um, Warner Brother to not not put her in a role. Um, I, well, I also uh, think they're kind of in a between a rock and a hard place because they are. if they get rid of her, there's going to be another big outcry because they still haven't fully cut ties with Ezra Miller. They've said that they're not looking at any future projects with them, but from what I've read from similar sources that they are too deep into the flash to cut them from flash. Like flash will release. They've dumped too right. much money into it already in years of uh, production. So, right. and I do think that they should still just release that movie and then just, you know, the, the they, they've already talked about fully rebooting DC Universe anyways. It's kind of a shame for Momoa because I do think, you know, whatever you think about Aquaman, I think he's done the best he's that the he best, could. Mo he's the best Aquaman. Well, I mean, he's been the only Aquaman, man. But <laughs> for, the, for the role, I, I think he's best suited to play well, Aquaman. Well, and, like, he, and he's just been like, you know, people don't realize he was cast like six or seven years before the first movie even came out. So the patience and... Uh, uh, passion that it takes, you know, for all that. that, that that's what I kind of respect about him. But, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, also, sorry, sorry, audio listeners in chat. I don't know if you guys, my neighbors are partying over here. I got the door shut. I don't hear anything. Okay. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, I don't know where I fall on that because I actually didn't hate her as Mira. I obviously, uh, you know, I don't want to get too deep and political, but I'm not a, I'm not a fan of her, especially throughout the trial. I, uh, I, uh, she reminds me of an abusive ex-girlfriend that I had once upon a time. So, but I I do like to somewhat you know sometimes try to separate the art from the the person and in the the roles themselves. I didn't hate her, but yeah, it's we're in a day and age now where big outcries on social media, whether you like it or not, can have an effect mm -hmm. on things like this. So, 
I don't I don't think it's looking good for him. Yeah. I just don't I mean I don't I would I think it's only fair she's cut from the movie just because of what you know Johnny was cut from his movies. Yeah. Um but I just don't want to see from here on out her getting torched too much just because she's got some issues and like Well that's like, also I, true too. I, I'm fine you like with every like like you don't have to like her you, mm-hmm. you don't have to you know uh, agree with what she did or whatever but like but you also don't you have to say she should get fucked by dogs and die right too. and you right. can't like say like death threats and like or, or even to her lawyers like they're just doing their job like it's not it's true like people need to there's a line you cross and like as long as you don't cross that line i'm fine with it but yeah, no, I, no, I, agree know, with that. I don't wish any hurt or any physical pain or or emotional mental pain on her yeah but she she does need to you know get help i don't know get help and but mm-hmm. and she does need to be punished in the industry i feel like yeah. just because of what she did yeah. you know yeah i think i uh, think that's fair i think that's, that's fair. fair i also like yeah, I, think that's fair. I wouldn't have cared if they left her in this one and then cut her from future projects but right. uh, they're gonna do what they're gonna do and we're gonna mm-hmm. we're gonna go with it i guess right but i do agree with everything you said you know yeah. no matter what you think about her guys you yeah know, sending uh, hate online find something she's still better a person <laughs> yeah yeah you know, just you know, take 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 her check. She got her she got her check. You know, I mean her she got checked. Now mm-hmm. we just need to move on. Like I don't yeah. I don't think it's in her best interest to keep pursuing it. Like let's let let let's look. The, the case is over. Court is over. Life move goes on. on. Let's move on so that way you can do what you said at the beginning. Is you know you wish that Johnny Depp will leave you alone. Well, the case is over now, so don't pursue anything else. Johnny will leave you alone. Bygones be bygones. Y'all split. And we y'all y'all try to recover whatever y'all got going on, but if I don't I don't I don't think it's in her best interest to keep if if she de- decides to do any more to keep pursuing it like just move on you know pick up the pieces from where you were and and, and recover from it. Yeah, and that would make me like her a little bit more as if like in the in the near future the coming future whatever like when she is interviewed or talks like and people want because people are going to question about that for her a long time yeah like, coming. So I would let just like her to see, say her be like, uh, it's over. I want to move past it. And that's all she says about it. And that would be just leave it alone. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Stop with the quadruple down. Um, Yeah. But um, because she's still sticking to that. Her lies pretty, pretty heavily. Before we get to the we got just a bit of new, more news chat and we're going to get to some games. But it, actually, I did want to bring up while we were talking about Obi-Wan, <clears throat> we're going to do this a lot. Audio listeners, sorry, we jump back and forth because uh, it is the smoking room and I am uh, uh, it's it's getting a little hot box up in here. OK, um, we are in Canada. It's perfectly legal. And uh, make sure you're of age. Anyways, um, June is the season for the shows. Now, I apologize so, so, for the, the audio listeners. Just so you can get to know us all, okay? I'm the guy. I watch all the movies, all the shows that comes out. Soul watches about 20% of them, the ones that are really, really good. You know, he watched Dune. 20, 20% is really generous. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, he's the busy guy. He's the brains. He ain't got time for TV. I am the lazy pothead that I have to get stoned every night and watch something. So, um, yeah, it, June. I am pumped because we do have Obi-Wan going on right now. We've got the Umbrella Academy Season 3 coming up. There's probably going to be a lot more shows that I miss here, guys, but here's the big ones anyways we're excited for. Umbrella Academy Season 3 coming up. The Boys Season 3 just dropped yesterday with the first three episodes. I only watched two. We won't talk about spoilers uh, too much, but all I will say is an Ant-Man type character shrinks down and crawls into the urethra of another man. (sighs) Shit's wild. First two episodes were absolutely amazing. See, that's, that's, that's some bullshit right there. See, that's, that in Souls, like, that's why I don't watch TV, motherfuckers. Um, Let me stick to anime. No, no, <laughs> but so if you see the after effects of that, then you would, but uh, I, want, I don't, I want, we won't spoil it all. Um, Umbrella Academy Season 3 coming up, and uh, Westworld Season 4, which I'm hyped for, and I think Miss Marvel might also be this month, but uh, yeah, sorry, I'm listeners, pleased. and throw some hate at me in the comments if you want. I don't care. I'm not watching. I'm just not excited for that show. It's just not for me. Not everything has to be for everybody, and that's just one that's not for me, but those are ones that are for me. I'm hyped on, and uh, damn, dude. Yeah, I'm going to say is The Boys so far is great, and... Uh, one other spoiler that I'm going to say that it's not really a spoiler because it was in the trailer, and it's a little game we're going to play here before we get to the gaming news. 
Um, in the new season of The Boys, there is a... So if you've never watched The Boys before, it's like a, it's a very interesting take on superheroes. It's very meta where, you know, the government and corporations use all the superheroes for profit and shit like that, making movies like we do nowadays, but also, like, you know, the, the superheroes, like, sell ads and shit like that so um it's kind of wild and that but they're all made by this this thing called compound v and uh so i'm just gonna wait for pongo to get back here because he doesn't know so all the heroes pongo are made by like a serum uh basically called compound v and in the new season they have a temporary compound v last 24 hours what i wanted to do though here was you know it's no fun if we name our own powers what we would get I want us to go around and uh, name what you think each other's powers uh, would be if you got shot up with the compound V. Pongo would be like Beast, yo. Yeah. From X Men. I was going to say he would be like an orangutan guy, but with a huge he would mustache. Be like beast. His mustache. <laughs> His mustache are like are like uh, porcupine uh, quills that he can like shoot out like like uh, little needles at the enemy. Like he like puffs his face up like a blowfish, and then they just pop out. That's a mustache ride you don't want. <laughs> <laughs> no shot. There we go. <laughs> and he uses his, his orangutan wang like Tarzan to, to swing from branches. Um, soul, souls, I think, chat, what would be a good one for soul? Soul would, I think, be, uh, you know what it would be? Souls would come in, right? And he would start singing some smooth jazz for you. Just start singing. <laughs> And like sound waves, and yeah. and all of a sudden you're like you're you're entranced, you know. You're like, oh man, this is good, this is good. And then all of a sudden he hits a high note, yeah. And then your head fucking explodes, boom, done. <laughs> that would oh, definitely be that. souls. Yours, Wolf, is gonna have to be something smoke related, um, like a toxin type <laughs> thing, is what I'm guessing. I, I'm, I'm thinking, yeah. I, I just oh. release like a fume, like there's just like smoke coming off me all the time, and like yes. at first it makes you shit your pants, and then if you have too much of it, you just puke and shit yourself to death. You like turn into like, a <laughs> and you're you are immune to anything. Like you can't be poisoned, you can't be like drugged or anything. You're immune to all that. Yeah, because you already got the it's already in your veins. AIDS. <laughs> I don't know about AIDS. You, you might, uh, yeah. you, you oh, might contract AIDS, bro. <laughs> but other viruses, sure, we'll go with <laughs> Well, damn. Okay. Well, I mean, I'll take that. I'll take that. Uh, Twitch chat, if you guys want to say, too, what you guys think our, our uh, powers would be, uh, spam them up there. And again, audio listeners, um, join us live in the chat. You guys can spam, too. We'll read out your comments. We'll, uh, we'll say hello. We, we've had people comment this whole time. We've just been trying to adhere to you guys more for the first episode this time. But, uh, yeah, join us, and you can post topics as well. Um, so let's get into gaming. Last bit of news for the, all the listeners out there, and then we're going to get into uh, we got some more games like that coming up um, and some more fun little topics. But gaming, we had a um, couple big uh, drops this week as well as the Sony State of Play. I think we saved the Sony thing for last. Let's start off with we got some gameplay for Sonic Frontiers, the new Sonic game that's basically uh, – copying the method that uh, Nintendo started with Breath of the Wild, where you just make all your old classic games into a big, beautiful open world, and people like it. It worked for Zelda, it worked for Mario Odyssey, it kind of worked for Kirby, and uh, will it work for Sonic? What did you guys think? I think it looks good. Sonic is a fan favorite, so mm -hmm. um, I'll be interested to see what it's like. Yeah, I, I, I like the open world aspect. Uh, the only thing for me is like when it's... Depending on how large the open world is, it's a little distracting at times um, I to get things that. done for me. The OCD yep. takes over. But other than that, yeah, I'm, I'm all for it. Or at least I'm all for games trying it for at least once. Once, just to see. <laughs> yeah. So I, I thought the, the trailer itself, like the graphics and everything, it looked really pretty. pretty. <clears throat> but I think it had the same issue with uh, people who remember the trailers for a game for Spoken. Uh, <clears throat> the world just looks too empty. Like they, it was like an eight minute gameplay um, demo, and it just it felt a little bit bare, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. It's still early though. I mean, they can change some of that, right? Oh yeah, Wait, for sure, I, for sure. I did like they did the uh, 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 the Sonic movie. The Sonic movie. Yep. There you right, go. Right. Uh, and what would the, like what like put more locations, more enemies, things like that? Is that would that help? Just so it's not like big grassy plains. 
Uh, no, it's not an empty space. Well, that that's what my issue was. Yeah, I didn't really see any like enemies or anything. It was just uh yeah, like th- there wasn't much combat, which I guess maybe, you know, it's Sonic, maybe it's not really about the combat as much, but I don't know. I just uh I'd like to see a little bit more in it. That's all. Um felt a little bare bones. When you do but it, it is early. you got to have combat integrated. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, like what's the point of walking around? Well, honestly, the gameplay demo I looked like it looked like Sonic running around in Halo Infinite, but uh where were, where where was all the grunts? You know, Halo Infinite. At least it's got some grunts running around doing some funny ass shit, bro. Let me tell you, play that game baked. Those grunts will make you laugh your ass off, Chip. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, then uh, as well, we had um the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Is that it? Uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. A lot of people are pretty hyped on that. Some people are a little. Uh, uh, disappointed on uh, some of the reveals we saw. We saw the legendaries and we saw a little more gameplay. Uh, the fan favorite, of course, is Lechonk. He's a pig Pokemon. Yeah, Chonk Chonk is a boy. fan favorite for sure. I, uh, I, and this is just me, a personal thing, listeners. I don't know. I think I'm just Pokemon out. I just can't get excited for it. I thought Arceus nope. was boring. Um, and I just, I don't know. I don't know. And the cost of games nowadays and shit too. There's a, hopefully a lot of games coming out around that, that time this year. Uh, so I just don't know if it's going to make my list, but for those that are excited for it, you know, uh, happy for it. We, we might end up trying it here on the Twitch. We'll see what happens, but I don't know. What about you guys? Hype levels? I, I'm just not, I mean, it's just, uh, it's just like, what, what else can you do with Pokemon outside of, yeah. what can you do to make Pokemon different outside of catching Pokemon? You can do Pal World. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And make, the, make it interesting in that concept. But if you're just catching Pokemon to be the best in the world again, we've done that 17,000 times. Yeah. I need something else. They're trying to make yeah, some almost... of the Pokemon look like Digimon, but it's not as cool. <laughs> yeah, Digi- yeah, it'll never be Digimon. For me, it's just, uh, it's kind of like the Star Wars thing. It's a little oversaturated. I mean, I we didn't even, I feel like Arceus and all that stuff just came out and now we're getting into ready like, yeah what the fuck well that's my thing yeah. yeah i would like to see them take a little more time to develop these games you know work on the pokemon work on the the graphics are and i know everyone's like well, graphics don't matter um sure in some games they don't and maybe in pokemon it doesn't necessarily but it's still embarrassing that a game on the same system as breath of the wild looks like that and costs the same fucking price it's just i don't know it's i think it's kind of embarrassing but it is what it is well i mean even if they stood like if the graphics like we're the same, but it just a longer time in between. Like I feel mm. like that would build a little bit more up for it. That that right. as well, yeah. I do agree. I can't believe that that was coming out this year, right after Arceus. It's kind of, and it will yeah, also crazy. potentially kill Arceus sales for them a bit. But I'm sure they'll. Uh, you know, Pokemon is the Pokemon company is very uh, brilliant at getting your money. They'll put it so that there's some rare Pokemon you can only get in that game if you own Arceus or some bullshit. They did the same thing with diamond and pearl so yeah, and pokemon, their fan base always buys pokemon games like if you love pokemon you're gonna keep buying it in my yeah, and pokemon is really not for the western world to be honest um the eastern world eat that up opposed to us i don't know i know a lot of people here in the west that they're they'll be eating that up especially like i was big in the pokemon go community uh a few years back and that shit's still it's popping I, I, I seen grandmas buying Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee because they were so hyped on Pokemon Go. They're like, oh, there's a new Pokemon game for the Switch, and I can only get Meltan if I buy a Switch. So th- they would literally <laughs> buy a Nintendo Switch and Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee to get the Meltan. No cap. And, that's, and then they would organize meetups at the Tim Hortons on Discord. If you come here, I'll be here for an hour, and I'll give you a Meltan box. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pokemon played are crazy. But speaking of Power, Pokemon Go was good when it first came out. Oh no, it's actually got the. And they had the better. world out there, and people were smoke oh. Ubering to get to their damn Poke stops and shit. Oh yeah, yeah. dude, that yeah. shit was a uh, it was an event. I played a couple of years back, and it was you can still have a lot of fun with it. it gets you out, but I just it's a, it's also a money grab. They try to get your money anytime, anytime. Now. They of they used to have a free event every month. Well, they still have the free event, but it was just always free. Now it's there's a free version but there's also a paid version you know that's just it's just better you might as well just pay for it right and i mean when you play that game heavy you, you, like i would dump well. money into it dude i'd put like not a lot but you know 30 bucks a week 20 bucks a week <sighs> buying fucking storage and fucking incubators to hatch eggs but yeah they're gonna get in your money um 
But Pow World, actually, yeah, I forgot about that. So brought that up. That's good. Uh, Pow World, if you haven't seen it, is the new Pokemon shooter type game coming out. This <laughs> shit looks absolutely it's dark as ridiculous fuck. dark as fuck um you have they're not, it's not they're not pokemon they're pals uh but you use them for slave labor to build your villages and work your factories um and the harder the factory boss is on your laborers the more production you get but the faster they die <laughs> what the fuck uh but it does look interesting wild. and it does look kind of fun it's more of a survival based game i believe uh, uh pongo's po posting the link in the chat and we'll also post it in the discord i'm gonna link our discord uh, in the bottom of all these podcasts as well if you want to join so you can post topics and stuff like that as well for uh, future podcasts. But yeah, Pal World, it, it looks interesting. It looks fun. I'm, I'm interested to see what they do with it. It's uh, more of a survival, uh, co-op survival shooter type game, I guess. So I'm excited for it. It's going to be interesting. It. Yeah, it'll be fun to play on stream, I think, for sure. One of the pals had a Gatling, and I was like, damn! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he looked like uh, my neighbor Totoro or some shit like that. It was a fucking Gatling like, gun. Uh, it was wild. <laughs> well, that shit was With Electabuzz colors, so it was weird. Um, yeah. We also, though, this week, uh, probably our our biggest gaming news, at least for me and Soul, as we are Sony players. Uh, we also have PC. We got, we got it all, but Pongo over there, he's still just living that PC life. He's just a... Uh, PC gang. Yeah. PC gang. But uh, we had the state of play, which... Uh, I thought That's actually it was the best direct or, or presentation we've had in the last few weeks. Um, wow. Yeah. yeah what, what did you guys think about it? Like overall, I give it even like a nine out of 10. Let's go. I was super excited for everything that they pushed out. And then I, I was amazed at how much VR stuff they have and how oh, yeah. clean the VR stuff looks like that horizon VR looks incredible. Yeah. I am hyped on PSVR too. I hope it's uh you know, when I'm not hyped just to see the cost of it, but it's uh, it definitely looks interesting. I'm glad that, you know, from what we saw, we'll, we'll do a quick rundown of the games, but from what we saw, it looks like, you know, developers are actually going to put some money and time behind that now and get it off the ground. Because I think that's, in my opinion, the, the, you know, PS5 and the Xbox Series X, that's not next-gen gaming. True next-gen gaming is going to be when everybody's got a fucking VR headset on. And uh, right. people just it's haven't been putting one. the development behind it and making them affordable. It's hard to get them in homes. But once they do, you know, shit's going to really go nuts. And it looks like Sony's hopefully stepping up their game on that this time because we didn't see it there. But along with the games that we'll mention now, uh, it's, it is uh, said that they're going to have a Call of Duty VR even coming out. Uh, pretty quick yep. on the launch for PSVR too, so that's all very hype. But yeah, we got. Uh, we we'll might as well start on the VR stuff since Pongo brought up the the Horizon looked phenomenal. Um, no, 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 we not. You can't go into VR without talking about the Resident Evil. Oh yeah, because that's oh, the one I was most people hype about. I, I was start saving that. I was saving that for last, best for last. Oh. But yeah, well, let's go for. <laughs> No, because Resident of the Boobas, Evil you know Ace. that people are hype. Oh, yeah. Big Dommy Mommy Vampire Lady D from Resident Evil 8 is back, in, but in, in VR. VR. Bro. She can actually step on you now. <laughs> oh, my God. All I'm going to say <laughs> is, hey, jerking off in VR is very dangerous, so be careful out there, listeners. You know, you got a headset <laughs> on, you got a VR. You don't know. You could be whacking off and you know maybe you live with your grandma on you know you're, you're cranking it <laughs> she walks in you don't hear and you nut on your grandma and she has a heart attack and dies do you want to live with that shame imagine giving that eulogy no no be careful jerking off in vr that's all i'm gonna say unless you live alone Reminds me of then a free range episode. <laughs> yeah there you go Seinfeld for sure um you know if you live alone then you got free range get ready dummy mommy's coming and uh yeah, I am super hyped for Resident Evil 8 VR. I loved Resident Evil 8 Village. I thought it was a fantastic game. And I said, why the fuck isn't there VR for this game? Now we're getting it. Let's go. And also, uh, one of the big announcements was Resident Evil 4 Remake, which I'm super hyped on, super stoked. And to go with the VR announcement, it did say that that is in development for VR as well, which is fantastic. Crazy. Yeah, they are yeah. going in. Um that's more wild. zombie stuff too. They had Dying Light. Was, was that the first one or the second one? Or is it its own game? The Dying Light. Or no, it wasn't Dying Light. I keep thinking no. it's Dying Light. It was Walking Dead. Yes. It was Walking Dead. Walking Dead, yeah. 
Why do you say that? Souls look like what the hell? Yeah, what the? I kept thinking of this dialogue. The Walking Dead. That actually looked really cool, though. The uh, Walking Dead Part 2. I don't remember the whole title, but um, that looked really good uh, in the VR. Um, and then uh, what else was it? No Man's Sky. Now, I know it's more of a, a niche game for some people, but... Um, Dude, that No Man's Sky in VR, that's where I'll be living in that. Clean. I'll be jerking off on aliens in that, dude. I'll be, like, finding a dune <laughs> planet. Oh, dude. No Man's Sky. Look clean, though. Yeah. Well, they have it in VR already on PC, um, but now it will be on Sony as well. So that is hype for me. Um, Do you think so, that Sony's got the best VR experience? Uh, no. No? What would you say that would be? I mean... As far as if, if it comes to well, it hasn't come out yet. That's the only thing. Yeah, it, or even with the old one, the old one. It, no, when it comes not. to titles, no one's beating Steam. That's okay. fair. That's true. Um, that Steam has way more titles. Well, that's I what, just asked because I haven't played the VR. Obviously, the PlayStation yeah. VR or many VR games. is VR is VR. Whichever game you play, but you okay. know when it comes to uh, just specs comfortability specs just... wise um cuz they did release the specs for the PSVR2 like a little while back and it is comparable to all the top of the line PC ones now I don't know if it will be compatible with PC if it is that'll be sick um yeah. that's what I've been saying for years they need to you know if you guys want to compete on consoles sure go for it but um for now until we get them all in everybody's home and get VR to actually truly take off they should compete a little bit less there and work together a bit more um, with VR, you know, it's for it for it to truly succeed. But we'll see. Okay. Um, but yeah, I, I'm hyped on that. W was there any other big games that caught your guys' eyes before I uh, pop up? <laughs> P um, or uh, Spider Man coming to PC? Yeah, uh, that pop up. That is a on W. That. I'm so excited about that. Yeah, and it's going to be only a time before they just say, hey, here's Miles Morales. Because even though Spider-Man is good, don't get me wrong, I love Spider-Man, mm -hmm. Miles Morales is better. Well, didn't they, I thought I saw an IGN uh, post or report saying that that was coming shortly after. That's good. It probably will, That's yeah. what you want to play. Yeah, okay. That's what you really want to play. Cause, uh, don't even, like, again, Spider-Man's really good. Mm -hmm. But the fluidity of, of Miles Morales is way better. Oh, yeah. Well, when I was watching Wolf play the other day, I mean, I was just like, my mouth was hanging open. Well, they the, 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 well they added like a couple months back. I hadn't played it since uh, where you can do ray tracing with the 60 frames per second now in Miles yep. Morales. And yep. um, I don't even want to fight anybody. I just want to swing. It's like a Swing stress around. ball for me, uh, listeners. It's so satisfying. Just, oh, my God. I. I could come. It's. Uh, I think Spider-Man games are the best superhero games. They're the most fun. Just swinging around and beating the fuck out of people. Is, it's so satisfying. For now. For, yeah. For now. Not, for now. Until we see what they do with the Wolverine. Even then, and I'm a big Wolverine fan, and I'll love it, and it'll be fun, but I still find Spider-Man the funnest because of the swinging and the acrobatics. I don't know. There's something just so satisfying about it to me there always just has been like since i was a kid but i grew up watching spider-man every day so yeah right that's there was also like when i was watching you play like when you swing or swung through the buildings like and the slow-mo added to it oh. but like you could still see what was going on as you were swinging through. so like, that theatrical was yeah they do yep. that yes. gets very Sonic just did a great job with i mean mm -hmm. They don't miss. They just took it ran with it. Even Ratchet yeah. and Clank, you know, some people weren't. Yeah, they just it wasn't their favorite one, but the graphics and the fluidity of it was so beautiful. Um, what about like a Superman game? Because the flying. I mean, so I don't know if you saw on TikTok, but there's somebody who has it in ray tracing, or mm -hmm. it's in. Um, it was from a tech real? demo, yeah. Unreal. It's a tech 5. demo, and okay. it definitely can be done. Whoever picks that up, mm -hmm. okay. It looks really good. I don't That's know pop. why they've never... I mean, I think they have tried to do some. I feel like there was like a game for like Superman Returns or something back when they used to do movie games. But um, yeah, it's... It's... it's, studio. it's I don't know why that hasn't taken off, but it would be interesting. I'd like to... I'd like to try it. The, the only I mean, other game where the movement to me has felt as satisfying as Spider-Man. We're going way off topic, uh, listeners, but it's okay. Um, I don't know if y'all remember a little gem from the PS3 days called Prototype. 
the way oh, that you yeah. could run and jump around and run across yes. the buildings, and then your guy, the powers that you had in that game were just unbelievable because you like shape shifted. So like you yeah. you as you leveled up throughout the game, you got different forms. One was a giant blade oh, arm. Right. Okay. One was like Wolverine yeah, yeah. claws, oh. symbiote looking stuff. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Prototype was the 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 uh, competitor to Infamous. Yes, yeah, and I actually okay. think Prototype One's better than Infamous One. Hot take. I love Infamous. No, nothing beats Infamous for me. I like Infamous Two a lot. Yeah, Infamous One got two. repetitive for me. It felt like Assassin's yeah. Creed One too much because that's what it felt like to me. Infamous was ripping off Assassin's Creed, which then Uncharted ripped off them all, but did really well with it. <laughs> um, but yeah. Game key. Actually, I feel like Uncharted One might have been out before Assassin's Creed One, but let's not get down that hole, listeners. Um, we also had um, we had a variety of games they showed. Um, there was one. What was that one called? Seasons, which a little bit too slow of gameplay for me, but damn, did it look beautiful? That cell shaded one. Did you guys see that? Yeah. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Some of the things that they're doing with those graphics nowadays, uh, it's just really nice. Same with the game. What was the name of the game? It was called Seasons. It looked like a very more like a telltale kind of game, a little bit slow kind of gameplay for me, but uh, visually, oh, it was yes, stunning. yes, yes, yes. Uh, yeah. Tunic as well looked very fun. Um, we got a look at, uh, and I'm just going over the ones with interesting graphics at the moment Roller Dome, which uh, yeah, Roller Dome is the one, Roller Drome is the one I want, I'm, I'm most excited about. Well, see, the reason why I got excited for it was I thought it looked beautiful, but I also, uh, listeners thought it looked like. This game's going to be free on PS Plus uh, about three months yep. after launch. So I'll wait for that, and then we're going to rock it. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> yep, that'll be a free PS Plus game coming up for sure. No, you not you don't want to roll a roller skate and have got tote guns, tote the toolie. That's I true. Mean, and so that's not really great. you don't want to do that. And speaking of PS Plus, um, I so th this state of play, I was worried was going to just be an ad for their new PS Plus Premium package coming out this month. Uh, fortunately, we barely got an ad for that it was most of the vr but the one ad we did get with it came with the game stray cat game i call it uh i've been excited for it yes. for i think for a twitch streaming game it looks like a lot of fun you play as a cat uh basically like plat it's like a platformer puzzle game going through a cyberpunk-esque city um we've just been told summer 2022 forever and we got the release date which i was it july 18th or july 11th 17th I believe. Oh, okay. Sometime early-ish in July. <laughs> Here's, uh, I should have had that right on hand. But anyways, uh, yeah, so coming out mid-next month, um, and it will actually be a day in release on the PlayStation Plus uh, premium pack. So that was pretty hype uh, for sure. Um, that was the only ad that we got that, hey, this is also going to be included. So I was hyped on that. Um, you think you're going to something to play, on, like you said, on stream? Mm -hmm. Um so I think that's gonna be that's gonna it's gonna be killer, and I can imagine the graphics are gonna look amazing on it. Yeah, mm. yeah, okay, yeah. To a four K monitor, there we and go. It, it, I like it too. It's just it's different. It looks fun. It's you know it's I don't know. I'm a big fan of platformers, so mm. I like it. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm very intrigued to play it. We're gonna be uh we'll be streaming it's that unique, one on the Twitch know? once it comes out for sure. <clears throat> Um, and then last but not least, what I thought was probably, you know, the two things I thought were the most hype was, well, three, because I was, I was hyped on the, the stray thing, but uh, was Resident Evil 4, and then they bookended the show with finally another announcement on Final Fantasy 16. We've been waiting a long time to hear about this game, and boy, the trailer was... Um, exceptional i thought i thought i i'm i really like where they're going with 16 we got a minimal gameplay in there but a little bit um and a new release date of next summer which i'm also fine with we got yeah we got lots of games coming out so we'll we we, we can let it sit on the burner let it get good and then uh yeah i'm ex i'm excited for sure for final fantasy 16 what'd you guys think of the trailer you know i'm hyped <laughs> like i big don't get me wrong chad if you don't know anything about mm -hmm. me audio don't know anything about me. My favorite game in the entire world is Final Fantasy VII. Like, mm. I am a Final Fantasy fan through and through. I like seven, nine, ten. You know what I'm saying? So I've been waiting for another Final Fantasy to capture my my uh, my interest. And to be this this is like in my mind, it's like Final Fantasy meets Attack on Titan. You know what I'm saying? And if you haven't seen it, you got to go look at it because what they're doing with this. Yep. 
I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah, it looks really fucking good. Even for me, somebody who's never been into Final Fantasy, I think I've maybe played one of those games. Not not for lack of like not liking it or anything. Just you know, I, you know me. I'm very flaky with stuff like that. So, um, but seeing that trailer, that was that's impressive. Yeah, <laughs> I'm. Uh... The people of the freaking summons. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. The, yes. Oh my god! It's Attack on Titans. It's Attack on Titans. <laughs> well, because I think this is like the prequel to the summons. It's like how they were created. Like them actually, Which like is amazing. yeah, it's like their pure form or some shit. It's yes. crazy. Beautiful. <clears throat> um, I am very excited on that. As Square well. never seems to amaze me when it comes to their Final Fantasy, even though they do the other studios they own. I don't know what the hell they doing with those. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're because they're converting a lot of stuff to mobile. So. Um, but we are running slightly into overtime. We don't we don't have a, a full uh, length decided really audio listeners. We kind of just go for a bit, a little an hour, a little over. What we're gonna do though is uh, um, there's always an after show here live on Twitch. So make sure again Saturday night 7:30 p.m. Twitch.tv slash Dirty Wolf Live, um, <clears throat> where we actually just are gonna take more questions just from the Twitch chat. Um, that'll be after, but we do have a little bit of questions to finish off the show. Um, I asked for some would you rathers uh, actually from our Discord. So if you guys okay. want to join our Discord audio listeners, you can input your would you rathers, and I'll curate through them and uh, pick the best ones, and we do them on the show. Now, um, some of these are memes. Uh, some of these are geared a little bit personally to some of us. Um, <clears throat> assholes um but <laughs> but yeah so click the the discord link join the discord and you can submit some for the next show um we're gonna keep this uh, first one kind of i guess not short but sweet but we're not gonna go too far into overtime anyways but we are gonna get into the chat would you rathers i did have a whole list of fuck mary kill but you guys are gonna have to tune in uh next week and if you're listening to this on audio they're gonna come out uh, every tuesday morning but you can again watch the show live saturday nights and also if you just want to watch a video of the vod these are all going to be up on youtube and the link is down below as well um <clears throat> all right so these were all from members of our discord sorry i got a frog in my throat here Ribbit. Uh, yeah. This first one is uh, this guy. He's in our Discord. He's he's a bit of a dick sometimes, you know, with some of these questions that he, he puts here. But he's also a really hardcore morber, so I can't really blame him. He's just, he doesn't stop morbing. And his name's Pongo. That's why he's <laughs> laughing his ass off here. The first one comes from Pongo to go with... To go with the theme of uh, some of today's topics, he asks, would you rather morb or not morb? And uh, I think I'll just a go ahead and answer this for all of us. You know, um, to morb or to not morb, there is no question. Okay? We always morbin. What the hell are you talking about? I put about? that in there because it's an easy softball to, to oh, get to start. <laughs> Soul's just sick of the Morbin. The best was Soul, J Mork, uh, like Klomp. I know they're all tired of it. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, the best was last week for for any of the listeners, you know, because we're all always like streaming and messing around with each other. Where right. Soul Soul was embracing it last week. His bod uh, J Mork he couldn't join us tonight, but he was he was sick of it, so he was banning me and Pago for saying it. <laughs> my my favorite part of the night was uh, Soul's just like, no, bro, if they want to morb, let them morb. And that's what I say. You know what? <laughs> Let the people morb, okay? Let them morb. <laughs> All right. The next What's one. In the world. <laughs> the next one comes. Isn't that Shakespeare? Someone on the Twitch chat says it is. That's actually what Shakespeare truly meant: to morb or not to morb. That's there is no question. question. There is no question at all. <laughs> um, this one comes from Crossfire. Okay. All right. Uh, would you rather get caught? fucking on the job or actually let me phrase it how he said it uh, sorry listeners he said would you rather get caught clapping cheeks on the job or would you rather clap cheeks on the job while your boss watches now if you're in the porn industry that just might be a thing that you have to do every day anyways but uh i'll go for uh i'll go for as the boss watches because you know depending on the situation maybe he'll join in maybe you get a raise i think it works out better that way and you've got blackmail on them and they don't just have blackmail on you yeah i'm i'm thinking the same wave on that one <clears throat> they can watch if they want i got blackmail bro he he allowed it to happen told me he was going to give me a raise if i did this i'm i'm making all fabrications 
Yeah, I think the other way is just too startling for me. Yeah, yeah it comes in. Look, man, look, if you think about it like this, like the, the, if you get caught, you, you're probably not going to finish. You know what I'm saying? But at least <laughs> if he's watching, you can finish. I don't know. I might get like. Or you just more bright there, you know? Just well, That's right. what I was going to say. I might get like too excited from the adrenaline, pull out and nut on him. So then I'm definitely losing my job. And if he has a heart and attack. You and you're getting charged. What? Yeah, charged. And I might get charged with murder because if it's like the grandma situation, he has a heart attack. Well, that, you just murdered your boss. It's just all around <laughs> not a great situation, I don't think. Um, yeah, I'm going with the second on that one. The next one, this one's a bit more of a practical one. This one comes from Apple, and he says, would you rather have a car with unlimited gas or a phone with an unlimited battery life? Gas or a car with unlimited <laughs> gas? What? I don't give a shit about this phone. Yeah, especially nowadays, I think that's an easy one for everybody. Fuck, fuck these gas prices. Um, yeah. Yes. I'm looking at a motorcycle. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm over it. <laughs> I don't ever have an issue losing battery, so that's an easy one for me, too. I ride a bicycle, Unlimited so I'm, I'm actually... It doesn't affect me too much at the moment, but still, it's... Uh, I mean, it, it still affects everything when you really break it down. It does, yeah. yeah um, it does, because when I do my Uber East, I get charged extra because of gas prices. Yeah. True. They went up in prices. That's true. Hate it. Yeah, I've been, uh, I've been doing good staying off color. of there. Yeah, yeah. For me, I just I try to stop at the grocery store every Friday now. Just fuck it. Yeah. But the groceries are still fucking through the roof, too. But yeah, yeah well, everything runs on gas, unfortunately. So we've got one more fucking meme from this goddamn orangutan motherfucker named Pongo. Yes. You, usually, too, we get it. We get a bit more. But because it was the, the first one back, guys, you know, we kind of I try to keep it a little bit small and with try to. Some practical ones and one related to topics, but again, guys, join the Discord and and post them, post them up. Uh, no fucking racist or hateful shit, though, or you will be deleted. Anyways, exponentially, exponentially, Fabulous. permanently, and I'll call your mother, tell her what you did. Indubitably. Would you rather like banana? Would you rather live with Amber Turd or never more again? Never more again. <laughs> so says he's ain't Mormon. See, for me, this one's pretty easy. I would take living with Amber Turd because once she tried to fuck with me, I would just morb out and just dip, bro. <laughs> like, bitch, I'm morbid. Peace. Turn into a bunch of bats and fly off. Yeah, take a shit in her bed first. <laughs> oh my Jesus! <laughs> Bat shit. It's actually poisonous. That's just crazy to think that. What do you think, Pongo? It's her name question. is synonymous with Amber or Turd forever now. Ever now, it's like in the re it's in the court records. The best was them saying it in the court. I uh, five times. I not even just yeah. once. Five I, times. I love that she laid a log in there. Well, that's the thing, and I forgot to spam this button when we were, we were talking about it, uh, listeners. But the memes from that trial, a mega pint. Oh, Crazy. I poured myself a large glass. Crazy. No, I I would go with <laughs> I can't unmorph. So you know the answer for me. Exactly. You can just morb out. What's she gonna do to you? You're Morbius. It's true. I mean, don't get me wrong. She's, you know, she might have took down Johnny Depp, but can she take down Dr. Michael Morbius? <laughs> what kind of fucking question is that? I don't know, man. You won't like me when I'm hungry. I don't know, man. If Ace Ventura took down the bat, then, you know. That's true. That's true. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's hey, true. You know, he had to deal with guano. When nature calls. Yeah. You know, he had to deal with guano. Who knows what happened to her again? And she, she, she is one that practices in the guano, you know, field. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> we got another practical one here from Mr. Klomp. He says, right. would you rather, I think this is an easy one for me. Would you rather live with foot pain every day of your life or back pain? Neither are good. Uh, uh, you got to pick one. I say I'd rather live with foot pain. Mm -hmm. like I, I just deal with it. I have back pain right now, and I don't wish that on anybody. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. I'm gonna go with foot pain. Just think about it. Anybody just, who has back pain, you hear how? Just think about it. You you can't hip thrust nothing. No. That's what I was gonna say. For True. for me, it's <laughs> you can't. Hip there's thrust no nothing. morbid there. <laughs> for me, it's You're not morbid shit. Yeah. For me, it's easy clap uh, foot pain because I already lived with that. Not so much now because. Uh, 
Uh, I'm a fat ass who uh, switched from uh, uh, the factory life uh, viewers to the the uh, uh, desk job. But uh, before that, I was uh, um, you know doing uh, factory work for a lot of it, and then I also did kitchen work for ten years. So I know the foot pain, especially kitchen work's the fucking worst because those kitchen shoes are always fucking dog shit, and you're slipping and sliding around. It's just sucks sucks working 10 hour shifts 12 hour shifts but i've lived with the foot pain and foot pain sucks it really sucks it's uncomfortable but back pain is next level especially true back pain puts you out you can't even fucking get up for the day so i don't can't yeah fucking stand it's ridiculous mm. i have it like i literally have a slip disc yeah. it's no fun no it's definitely the worst one so i'll take the foot pain it sucks but you know what it's easier to soak your feet, and uh, if they got the, the massages and shit they got nowadays are uh, yeah. a miracle. It's easier to put your feet up than it is to uh, get rid of back pain because it's crazy. Nice. And most of the shit that they'll have to give you, you know, like for your back pain, only it doesn't even it only does so much. So I've pulled muscles in the back too, and like you can't sleep, you're not comfortable yeah. when you sit. Like it's just not, nah, can't do it. It's not a good look whatsoever. No. <laughs> Now, this next one, if there's any audio listeners out there, okay, you know, since this is the there's first no one. If, there's no if. Yeah. The audio listeners. Yeah, the audio listeners. Sorry. Misspoken. I'm already baked. Um, for all the audio <laughs> listeners, we we didn't do the full bio, but there's two things you need to know about me, okay? On my arm, I got a Zelda tattoo, and on my neck, I have a Berserk tattoo. If you don't know what Berserk is, I mean, you're missing out, but it's the greatest story ever written. So this one cuts deep. Adelie in the Discord says, you have to pick one to keep and one to delete. Zelda or Berserk. And, Oof. oh, this that is, hurts. That's kind of hard. Yeah, how, you can't. That's a, that's hard. Pitiful. I mean, I actually watched Berserk. Like, like this the, that 20% chat and audio listeners that I actually watched because Wolf <laughs> Yeah, and suggested it, and he only watched and the it was trilogy. Good damn story. He only watched the trilogy, which is like oh, yeah. maybe ten percent of the story. Twenty. So and that's it, a good damn story. Oh yeah, True. I would I, have to. Uh, I would have to pick to keep Berserk. As much as I love Zelda, it's the game that really got me into like you know, uh, like a. I don't, I don't think you would necessarily call it an RPG, but you know, like a story-driven adventure game like that. Because um, before that, I just fucking played like Mario and Mega Man. Um, I don't know. I have a deep love for Zelda now and always, but Berserk like changed my life in a lot of ways. Like uh, I was, excuse me. Uh, you know, I'm a, I've, I've suffered with addiction a lot through my life uh, as you know, and a recovering addict. And uh, Berserk actually like found me at like a, a good time <laughs> when I needed it, and uh, actually helped me to like stay sober and shit like that, which. Some people might find silly, but you know that's that's just how it works. We find what works for us, right? And uh, yeah, so Berserk has a deep and powerful meaning to me. Um, I think it's just you know such a powerful story when you really read it and break it down. So, fortunately, Zelda, Link, I love you, but I'm gonna have to delete you and keep Berserk. It's just what it is. He does have a Berserk tattoo. Yeah, I do. I have the on his neck. the same uh, brand of sacrifice that Guts has. He does. Which, you know what? Well, actually, you guys answer, and then we're going to – we have another – this guy named Pongo who's a prick put another one like these in here, a terrible one. <laughs> okay. I'm going to say Zelda because as much – I'm not I'm not fully invested in mm – -hmm. like, I like the, the story, but Zelda kind of – you know, I would not have my – like, if I go back to my, my roots, and when we started playing Smash Brothers, Sheik was my character. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. And so Zelda, Zelda, the Zelda, the universe, as I call it, you know, um, was a was a really big thing. Um, we wouldn't have Ocarina of Time. We wouldn't have oh, a Joyous Mask. Like it would be tough because I I remember playing the, the original Zelda as a kid. Oh, yeah. You know, it would be tough not to have that because that was like it was the only one that had a gold cartridge. Like that was yeah. the trendsetter for Zelda. Like it stood it stood alone. And I, and, I, and I dig that. I love that. So I would have to say I would I would pick Zelda all day. All all the stuff that inspired too. Yeah. That yeah. stuff. Yeah. I just, see. For, well, I'm first, I'm the only nothing, one. Nothing for context. Go ahead, I was go just ahead. gonna say I'm the only one that's like fully read all of Berserk, and uh, mm -hmm. that's not a slight anybody. Just just but just so the audio listeners know, that's why it cut so deep for me. Fucking Adelie, <laughs> kicking me in the balls like that. See, and I don't have, like, I haven't watched it, but I have read 
pieces, I guess, panels and things like that. And just seeing people, you know, how they've reacted to parts of the story. Um, but first, like anything that helps you with overcome any kind of issue in your life is not never silly, no matter what it is. Um, but I would have to go with keeping Berserk and get rid of Zelda just because I think the the lessons, the morals, whatever, the meanings of it are more impactful for me the, than what Zelda brings the to the philosophy, table. Yeah. The philosophy, yeah. The philosophy. Yeah, well, for anybody out there that has no idea what it is or what we're talking about, if you took basically some of the greatest works of Friedrich Nietzsche, um, you know, one of the, probably the great, well, you could argue maybe one of the greatest philosophers um, that man has known, uh, it's, it's basically like if you took a lot of his works and even some of uh, Carl Jung's works and turned them into a fantasy story. And mm. it's a story about friendship, love, betrayal, darkness, betrayal. hatred, betrayal. vengeance, betrayal. And, um, and growth and healing and, and recuperation and, and uh, camaraderie betrayal. and betrayal. betrayal. Yeah, the betrayal <laughs> oh, <man>. is deep. <laughs> Uh, I will just leave it there, but betrayal, betrayal, damn it, betrayal. Yeah, no, it's the biggest betrayal you'll ever see. It's ever. heartbreaking. Ever. The story will leave you feeling uncomfortable. It'll leave you feeling morbid. It'll leave you feeling depressed, but it'll also, you know, sometimes like leave you like, ha like with the highs are highs and the lows are lows. Let's yeah. put it like that. But it'll make That's you, it'll make you though, look like... inside of yourself though and think, you know, Holy shit! How would I, you know, how? Yeah, sometimes, you know, we all like to, I, as me especially, I'll, I'll say viewers like to play the pity party and look down like, ah, oh, fuck this or that. But when you, it, whether it be fantasy or not, you literally think about it, it's like, damn, it can always get worse. <laughs> yeah. I don't think, yeah, I, I, I don't know, man. For him, oof. Like, chat. If you haven't seen the series, I go, go watch it. Yeah. He, he the, we tell you, we as a group employ you to go watch. The series yeah. soul is uh, referred to would be the the Netflix trilogy of the animated movies of Berserk. It's uh, of the golden age. Um, it's basically the pivotal setup arc of all of Berserk. It tells basically the the precursor precursor story of of everything. Like it's it's really really good and well done. Or if you're uh, more into some older animes, there is a '90s uh, series of it that is really well done as well. But um, so to piggyback off of that one, a character from Berserk uh, who we all love, all the Berserkos love, Casca, the Potato Queen, the Warrior Princess Casca. We love her. Pongo asks, "Would you rather kill Casca or Mikasa from Attack on Titan?" Mm -hmm. And anybody that watches my stream or mm -hmm. as you podcast listeners will get to know. We are, uh, you know, we are slight weebs over here. We like the animes, and we love Attack on Titan, and I fucking yes. love Mikasa Ackerman. I think that she's probably arguably the best character in the show, so I now hate and resent Pongo for asking me this question, making me to answer this, because <laughs> you're a cunt. Um, shit. I don't know. I can't pick. You guys go first. I'm going to say Mikasa, and I only say that because, one, like... Not to say that the potato queen wasn't loyal, you know what I'm saying? She gave guts a hard goddamn time. Mm -hmm. Um, you'd keep Mikasa? Mikasa's, Mikasa's oh. loyalty to, to Aaron oh. is unfathomable, you know what I'm saying? Like, this man, like, it, I'm not gonna spoil it for anybody if you haven't watched it, but like, she is ride or die for Aaron, and I need somebody like that in my corner, you know what I'm saying? That's a good point. That's a good selling point. Yeah, because I mean, shit, this man is, <laughs> he's done some things, you know what I'm saying? And she's, she's questioning things, but at the end of the day, she's like, that's my man, 50 grand, you know? He, he, he. <laughs> yep. So, my. And she's an Ackerman. So, uh, it, makes, it makes it even more better. The only issue I have with that, which I don't know how to say this boiling too much of the fourth season um but there's a scene where she has a chance to say something pretty important and nothing gets said and because of that i'm gonna kill her of course not she's uh she's a mute mm. she's a mute <laughs> she's a mute I mean, <laughs> whereas like casca i'm casca I'm, I'm gonna keep yeah, her casca is gonna say what she wants she's gonna, she's gonna say her piece That's wait true. who's mute wait what what i'm kind of confused Misika, i said Misika's Misika. a mute. she doesn't really because well if there's the scene at season four, mm -hmm. 
where she has a chance to say something to Aaron. Oh, uh, I kind of forget, but I kind of remember. I'm going to go back yeah, and watch it all. Rewatch uh, it because that, that's pivotal. For I'm not going to lie, listeners. We I always pour a nice cold one and I roll a big fat one. So by the end of the podcast, I'm... Uh, I'm feeling Please. I'm feeling good. Um, <laughs> we're in the smoking room, baby. <laughs> um, oh, fuck, dude. This is so tough for me. So if you guys don't know, Casca is probably uh, not probably. She is the lead uh, female of Berserk. There's, I guess there's many leads, but she is the. Uh, oh, man, I don't know. dude. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't save her, man. I couldn't save her just to know what she go, uh, what happens. I can't save her. I wouldn't want to go through it. <laughs> Well, I, it's I'll I'll put a little spoiler there. She does recover later, and it's that's fine. I don't give a shit. No, but it's <laughs> e- it's, it? it's no really shot. sad though because she's recovered, but every time she looks at guts, she has a huge PTSD moment. Yeah, that's just, no shot. Do oh, I want to do that? Go through that. It's so bad. Oh. You know what? I might have to agree with these guys to go with Mikasa because I I love Casca. I love Casca. Oh, but damn, he, the, what Sol said about the loyalty is um, it's pretty damn true. Um, you don't really get somebody much more loyal than Mikasa. Uh, plus, she got that jacked six pack now, and I'm I'm into that. I like me a lady with a six pack. Mm. <laughs> Strong. God damn. Also, also, let us not forget. I love memes, and one of the best memes going around this year when Attack on Titan was airing was Goth Mikasa, and I love me a good, I love me a good Goth girl. Mm. All right, there's just no, I just no way I would want to watch what happened. Old girl happened, like, but she's also I just can't. badass as fuck. Like she's super badass. I like her character a lot, but yeah, yes. Casca is. Uh, Casca comes with a lot of emotional turmoil and a lot of emotional damage, unfortunately, uh, uh, listeners, and especially for you as well. If that's if that's your girl, unfortunately, <laughs> Chant man, I just if you, you you think of her character and you think of the series, and all you can think is that what what happened? Yeah, like how it went from zero to one hundred. That's fair. That's fair. All right, now we've got one more one. This one's gonna go right off the rails, listeners. Okay. Uh, I, I should have apologized in advance because uh, if you haven't noticed already, a lot of our listeners and, and people in the Discord are degenerates uh, like myself. So this one comes from Crossfire where he asks, would you rather bang 100 furries, men or women, whatever your preference, <laughs> but you go straight to heaven afterwards, or you live for 100 more years, but it's Benjamin Button style. So in like five years from now, you would regress to your 20s, like the best time of your life, and then you just slowly degrade over the the other 95 years to a baby. I'm I'm banging 100 furries that are female. <laughs> That's all there is to it. Same. I'm going to bang 100 furries. I'm not going to specify, though. Leave it up to Mr. <laughs> I'm, I'm banging them out. I want to do them all at once, though. Bang it out. Giant. Bang it out. Give me the Look, ticket to heaven. I want to do it all at once, though. Like a free hair. Free outfit while I'm while I'm doing a do. Hey, that's oh, schwitzen, schwitzen. That's almost like uh, I don't know if anybody ever watched Entourage. I know that's known as like the douchebag bro show of 2022. But let's be real, everybody watched it back in the day. Um, there was an episode where was it? I think it was Johnny. It was Johnny or Turtle, and they got this this really hot girl message them like on an app or something. And then when they got there, they found out. I think it was Turtle. But she she would only have sex with them if they wore the furry outfits. He's like, screw this, I'm out. So then Johnny comes in and he's like, I don't care. He just says, <laughs> he goes to the um, Yeah, I would bang the furries. Men, yeah, women, me. dogs. I don't care. Put them in. No, I'm kidding. Not the dogs part, but all of them at once in a giant stinking. I just want it to stink. Just a sweaty orgy and furry. Ugh. Everybody's going to cough up hairballs out of every hole they have at the end. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. We've got <laughs> no comment. We've got one more. And then I'm going to end it with one simple trivia question. Or two. Oh, maybe we could do two quick because they're pretty quick. Um, one more again from uh, Pongo. Um, <laughs> he says, Would you rather, and this is aimed at me because I'm a Canadian, of course, uh, yeah. but everyone can answer, Would you rather eat poutine every day of your life or never again? That's fucking easy and simple. Again, the Canadian, I will eat the poutine every day. I love it. It's the best. Fuck yeah. Poutine every day. Let's go. I can't really answer this one. I've never had it until I come up there. Yeah, oh, Soul's never so... had a good poutine. He's going to get one. I've never had it. 
I'm afraid though, because you know, being lactose intolerant and having cheese curds. Yeah. But you know, I'm going. I'm going to take my meds and try it out. True. True. Pray for it's, the best. Pray for the best. But maybe, maybe if you get one like with meat or something in there too, it will yeah, help. help it out. Yeah. Sure. It's also a lot of fucking potato. That's like not a dairy. There's a Philly cheese one that I want to try. A a what? I thought I saw a Philly cheese one at that one. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He's talking about yeah, yeah. I don't even think that's the the best place necessarily, but they have the most selection. (laughs) Alex says, "Bring your lactic pills solely." Yep. We gonna eat real real poutine. Shit. As long as I, I make the best couple things. When I'm thinking, I'm thinking around September, September, October is when I'm coming up. Um, and as long as you know, I get a nice hotel, decent hotel, and uh, we get some good food, I'm happy. Oh, yeah, that'll happen for sure. All right, audio listeners, we're reaching the end here. I did have a lot more written out, but that's how it goes here. We just kind of we shoot the shit, we get going. Sometimes we go off the rails a bit, but that's what it's all about, right? Camaraderie, chilling, shooting the shit. We're going to fly through these quick two trivia questions, and we're going to end it off there, and we'll see you all next week. The first one, though, because we were talking a lot about Star Wars today, I wanted to ask you all. Um, and we're also going to start taking uh, trivia questions, sorry, from the Discord. So it's not just one I know the answers to every time. And we'll also sometimes have a few more cast members. Um, but so the first one is, and uh, for the, the chat can uh, answer as well. When was Boba Fett's first introduction into the Star Wars universe? I don't know, actually. That's not a, what was it? Say the I don't know which again? one of the. the say, I, I don't know if it's five, six, or seven. So, so is it four, five, six? And so I can I can give you guys a multiple choice uh, if you want. But yes, please. Okay, so we'll go like this. We'll go. When was Boba Fett's first introduction to the Star Wars universe? Okay, and it is either Star Wars: A New Hope, Star Wars: The Empire Strikes Back, Star Wars: The Christmas Special. Or Star Wars: The Return of the Jedi. Man, it makes me almost feel like it's the Christmas special because <laughs> it's yeah, the only it's off there. one. I, I was gonna say Empire Strikes Back. I'll stick with that just for shits and giggles. Okay, Pongo's lock in Empire. Soul, you want to lock in? I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna do the Christmas joint because it's just off. I don't know what the fuck that is, well, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that one. There we go, Chad. Ding, ding, ding. Wow. Soul gets it. It was actually a Star Wars Christmas special. He showed up um, animated. Uh, some people, I, I was kind of surprised. I thought someone would say A New Hope. Uh, he did come in A New Hope, but not the first original version in a later edited version. Uh, you see him for a, a quick second. Um, but his most prominent point was Empire Strikes Back. But because in the Christmas special, it was a very short animated part, and people like the design a lot. Um, they made him a bigger role in Empire and then kind of kept it going from there. Um, and the last one, this one, um, I mean, you know, Soul's also a Nintendo head, so he might know the answer, but I did this one to hopefully embarrass Pongo since he made me answer those two questions, but he might show me up here and maybe he's the man. Okay. When was the first time Cranky Kong was introduced into the Donkey Kong series? I, I want to say Donkey Kong 64, but... I just got to remember which one it was. Oh, uh, Soul, since you got it right last time, you can lock in your answer first if you want, or you can choose to pass. I'll pass. I'm trying to think. Uh, Donkey Kong Country. Okay. Pongo's going to lock in Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo. Very notable one. You see him right at the beginning in his rocking chair, chilling out. I don't know. Forget. Yeah, I'm I'm locking in country. That's 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 my answer. I want to say it was country because he definitely was in country, but I know it was before that. I can't remember anything before. That. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, soul, you're a boomer like me. Use your boomer energy. Remember I know, I know it's in one of the Mario's. Oh. Alright, I, I All right, give up. I'm I gonna know. give you ten seconds. I'm going to lock in Donkey Kong. Um, not country. Definitely not country. Um, 
what is it? Uh, the, I don't know. If you want, you can pick the same answer as Pongo. And uh, because even if, uh, let's say it was correct, you got the first one right. So you'd get two points and uh, the surprise prize at the end would still go to you. Sure. Well, just, I guess country. Cause I, I don't think, if, I don't think, I don't know if it, I don't think there's anywhere else. That well, Con would have been. Guess what? What? You both got it wrong. Bruh. Uh, but you still win <laughs> because you got one point. The actual correct answer is the original Donkey Kong. A lot of people didn't know this. The original Donkey Kong, the Donkey Kong that you play in that was Donkey Kong Senior, who is later known as Cranky Bruh. Kong. Right. And the Donkey Kong that Donkey we know Kong. from Donkey Kong Country it's made his junior. first introduction in Donkey Kong Junior. Yes, you are correct. Damn. You are completely correct. But on Soul that one. still wins, Chad, and he gets the grand prize of a big kiss for me. Oh, Chad, you can get these there hands. There we go. Get <laughs> these skippy bets. Get these goddamn hands. I'm just kidding, viewers. Uh, he wins five dollars. Uh, one Twitch Prime subscription for me. Uh, we are working, you know, on uh, getting some sponsors and getting some better prizes. But uh, for now, you know, uh, so you win five dollars. <laughs> All right. All right, though, but we're going to call it there. We're going to call it for now. Thanks, all of you audio listeners, for tuning in. We will be back next week with some more. We're going to, I guess, finish up uh, some of the questions here that uh, that we mi- that we missed uh, this time, and uh, we'll also have some more topics for you. But click the links below. Uh, join the Discord. You can uh, post some topic suggestions, or if we're doing some Would You Rathers that week, I got a tab in there where we post everything. But before we go, uh, do you boys want to uh, start with my co-host, Mr. Soul, here. Uh, give yourself a shout-out. Let him know he's got the unscripted podcast going on live tomorrow night. So, uh, yeah, tell him what's going on, Soul. And then, yeah, uh, yeah. Pong, so we, uh, I am, again, I am the uh, the owner and uh host of the unscripted podcast i have two co-hosts amazing co-hosts um if you listen to the podcast you'll figure out who they are uh, they're in my stream all day I'm, i also stream on twitch www.twitch.tv backslash soul unscripted uh where we game with the dirty wolf quite often uh so you'll see me all the time uh and we have a good old time you know we have a good old time in the stream on the podcast the podcast is simply about we're unscripted, so we talk. We do anything from what would you do to we've done mukbangs and um, we've created scenarios for you to figure out what would you do in that scenario. So we've done some everything, and I, and I definitely talk about uh, me as a veteran and my PTSD uh, and how, what I do when I go through that. And I also uh, I also uh, raise money for a charity stack up. You'll see a sticker here. Um, and if you come to my stream, you'll find out more about Stack Up and what they are all are, are involved with and how, what they do for the vets out there. So, um, yeah, that's me. Hell that's my yeah. plan. And Pongo, tell them where to find you and what's what you got going on. Twitch.tv slash the real Pongo Pygmaeus. But you'll probably just click the link because it's a lot easier than to try and spell that out yourself. Um, you guys know me, you know, variety streamer, kind of playing a bunch of different things. Most of the time uh, or recently, it's going to be League of Legends. Um, cause I'm hardcore addicted to that. Um, streams are a little on and off lately, but you can just jump in discord. I usually announce everything on there. Um, and again, I appreciate the opportunity for you Wolf and, and soul for you guys both kind of welcoming me into the community. Yeah, man. No love you. Brother. Of course. Nothing but love. Nothing but love. Hey man, with a mustache like that. Hey, I, 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 poor Chad. I, I can't even, you know, <laughs> I don't have the mustache back yet. So you gotta, uh, you can, you can kind of see it out. there. <laughs> it's there. It's there. Yeah. And anyway, for watching on YouTube, Slow sorry, the cameras are a little scuffed this week. We're always a little scuffed, but we're getting a new overlay made right now. And we'll, we'll be on zoom and stuff next week and have it figured out a little bit better, but audio listeners out there again, you can also watch the video on YouTube or you can join us for the live show Saturday night, 7 30 PM Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dirty wolf live. Thank you guys all for listening. We will see you guys in the next one till then stay safe, be easy and peace. All right. Check it. There we go. Okay.